Hello and welcome to a brand new episode of Gyan from Pehlwan. Today we have with us Mr. Murli Nair, who is the banking president of a company called Zeta. Zeta has created an integrated banking suite that enables entities to open, um, basically integrate embedded finance product into their uh, solutions and basically add it as an additional revenue line. So uh, Murli has been a banking veteran for past couple of decades, and Murli, over to you. It would be great if you could, you know. Quickly take us through what Zeta does and uh, how are you revolutionizing the embedded finance space? Right, uh, Shreyas, uh, thank you very much for having me. Uh, it's a uh, it's an honor and a privilege to do this uh, podcast with you and for your listeners. Uh, so, uh, Zeta is a company which is founded by Bhavan Turakya, a serial tech entrepreneur, uh, about seven years ago now. Uh, Zeta's main goal is to basically disrupt the banking technology phase. Uh, 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 you know, from the uh, from uh, from a standpoint of what uh, modern banking is all about, right? So, um, what we've been attempting to do is to help uh, fintechs on the one hand, uh, like you said, uh, really power their fintech experiences for their end consumers by offering a modern banking stack for their use. And on the other hand, we also directly deal with banks uh, who are out to moder- modernize their legacy stacks and offer modern banking experiences to their customers. Uh, talking about embedded finance, uh, really speaking, what's happened in the last, you know, maybe uh, 10 years or so is the fact that consumers are adopting to commerce uh, in, in droves uh, at, at the point where they are interacting with brands. So think Amazon, think um, uh, Google, think, uh, let's say, uh, uh, you know, uh, places like Big Basket, where you're doing your shopping. Uh, What you want to be able to do is to invisibly make your payments uh, in a seamless sort of manner. And that is where the word embedded comes in. So you're embedding the ability to do financial services at the point where consumers interact with brands. A consumer like Bhavan is really uh, used to saying, a consumer doesn't wake up in the morning and say that I want to make a payment. They want to get on with their life and they want to make payments in a in a seamless uh, way that uh, it, it really doesn't take any of their attention. So that's really what Zeta's role and effort is. Uh, so we, we have created a uh, uh, Omni stack, which is basically uh, built uh, uh, in a cloud native manner. It's got 100% API coverage. It uses microservices architecture um, and it uh, is able to produce uh, for the end consumer either a credit card experience or a debit card experience or a savings account experience, which is completely modern, has great features and benefits, uh, and makes the payment experience from a customer standpoint absolutely invisible. That sounds really interesting. So what you're saying is that this not essentially focuses on payment, but ultimately across the financial domains, right? And from what I understood is that uh, what Zeta is trying to do is make the finance part of that complete and basically, you know, disappear into the background and let the customer focus on the main thing that is what they want to buy or what they want to order online. And finance could just be an afterthought they don't, they don't even have to think about because it is completely embedded into the ecosystem. So I uh, just wanted to understand what is the current landscape and where do you see challenges or where do you see innovations coming in? Uh, right. So uh, if you really think about uh, the way the uh, banking ecosystem has evolved, Shreyas, uh, mm-hmm. you will see that banks historically uh, were uh, you know, deploying legacy technology, which is technology that was invented in the 80s and 90s, right? Uh, right, right. Uh, uh, they were the first to perhaps uh, adopt uh, mainframe based computer systems, which were uh, automating their uh, manual processes and offering banking as a service uh, using uh, what today we call legacy technology. Uh, if you look at the banking stacks in use, they had a core banking system and then they had multiple systems from several players. Uh, which were then stitched together to offer the kind of experience that uh, uh, customers have. So if you want to think about a mobile banking experience of a legacy bank, you would find that typically there are about eight or nine vendors who have stitched together a set of uh, technologies to make available that end mobile app, right? So if you really think about it, 
um the issue with having different disparate systems stitched together to offer an experience to customers is the fact that uh they will end up uh being as good as their weakest link in the chain right so that's the reason why fintechs right. have come in uh to disrupt and give a great user experience to customers uh so mm-hmm. if you think of uh, amazon pay or if you think of uh you know uh, ola offering financial services to its customers or uber offering a uh, offering a co-branded credit card or any of these large digital players entering the payments arena like in the us for example you're familiar with apple uh, launching an apple card the reason they have yes. done it is because they believe that uh you know it's about time that consumers enjoyed a great banking experience uh which is uh which belongs in the 21st century right so you should not be in a situation where you are relying on technology which was written 30 or 40 years ago uh you know if you really think about it and bhavan is again uh, our uh, ceo uh, keeps uh, saying this to a lot of these uh, players that the biggest challenge is that because you are beholden to this legacy technology you are allowing all of these fintechs to disrupt the space right so uh the challenge that banks face is that they have to uh they have millions of customers on their legacy platforms they uh, and therefore the fintechs are basically coming in to ta- to replace them uh to offer these great uh, consumer experiences mm-hmm. the regulation however requires that fintechs have to work alongside the banks, banks. Uh, they have to partner with banks because they don't very easily get a license to launch a savings account product or a debit card product uh mm-hmm. without a sponsor bank uh in the background so that is right. a challenge which i think will continue to exist and i think uh the regulations will continue to evolve in this space uh, uh but i think india is really at the forefront of many of these changes uh, the ecosystem allows innovation uh and many of these uh, fintechs are jointly working with banks to solve for the use cases take uh, you know p2p lending take uh, uh, tokenization take uh, 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 subscription based payments or you know recurring payments the legislation is here uh, there are a number of fintechs which are working on great products to solve for uh, segments distribution uh, uh, and reaching out to customers customer segments that banks were not serving uh, right. so while there are challenges I think the system is evolving beautifully to handle some of these challenges. Got it. So I have a couple of questions for you, right? One is from the point of view of banking, and one is from the point of view of the end consumer. So I'll go to the banking question first. Uh, when, uh, like a couple of years, uh, you know, earlier, like right, when there was not much clarity on how fintech uh, will move ahead, there were a lot of discussions going on around. Uh, the traditional banking versus fintechs and basically will fintechs essentially take over this piece because of the you know quick agility and ability to give a great customer experience now as we move forward and with you know rise of uh, players like zeta uh, basically aggregating all the banking solutions and giving them i mean making them consumable by these fintechs right so ultimately what we have seen is that they are uh, coexisting to an extent and basically are able to build these products together so do you see this uh, as a temporary phase to i mean moving forward regulations could essentially you know be a lot more uh, let's say less stricter so that uh, more and more fintechs could start getting let's say nbfc licenses or maybe even uh, banking licenses like payment bank licenses to essentially open up uh, those kind of uh, products on their own without partnering with banks do you see that happening or do you see uh, these mutually beneficial collaborative uh, efforts moving forward the way it is uh it's a great question shreyas i think there are you know the way i see the market evolving there are three broad trends right mm-hmm. i think uh uh banks themselves will reinvent themselves okay so they will focus on uh moving their technology to contemporary technology systems like for example using zeta's omni stack for launching modern banking products for their customers and we are seeing a lot of traction uh in that respect uh and many banks not just in india but globally are taking our stack to launch modern banking experiences for their customers so that's one trend and there in the banking world there will be uh the early adopters who will be the ones who will win the race in the banking competition world if you think about mm-hmm. it they will they will accelerate their movement to cloud hosted technology 200% api coverage to microservices architecture based systems like the system that we offer 
and they will uh, you know revolutionize the banking experience for their customers so that right. is one trend that will clearly happen the second trend that will happen is that fintechs will partner with banks uh to solve for niche areas where uh for example take a you know let's say a segment of teens uh, where the banks have generally historically not catered to right so if you look at fampay uh which is a a, a startup which is solved uh, you know which has got more than a million customers today by solving for this unique segment of customers uh i think it's a great idea that they can partner with a bank in the background and use zeta's technology to uh, to solve a need of the student community who's digitally savvy and they've addressed that concern of these uh, parents by you know giving them adequate controls over the entire experience that their kids have so those kind of partnerships will continue to grow and the third uh, sort of wave that will happen is when open banking regulations come in right so right. i think uh, what what will happen is see india is still not uh, got a open banking fr- framework but if you see in europe uh, they have really democratized banking so access to your bank account credentials is something that you as a consumer have power over uh, and you can say that you know uh, the this new fintech i wanted to take my bank account credentials and give me a great user experience so that is a trend that's already started happening in europe and it will it is something that is bound to happen in india as well if you look at the account aggregator framework that uh, the rbi is already uh, you know enabled there are five account aggregators who are doing exactly that it is open banking in a way because it allows these account aggregators to use the banking information and then uh, you know f- uh, fintechs can use this information to solve for unique customer problems so Perfect. all the three will coexist see at the end of the day banking historically has never been dominated by a single player you know you mm. can say e-commerce is dominated by let's say maximum of two players like amazon and flipkart in india uh you will have maybe uh the automobile industry where maruti is 50% market share right. if you take ott platforms there may be two or three if you take uh, cabs there is just uber, uber and ola but banking will always be a multi party system why because it is in the interest of the consumer it is interest in the interest of the uh, of the country's economic stability to have multiple banks uh uh operating and no single bank dominating the scenario or no single financial services institution uh, or a fintech dominating this space you've seen what's happened in china already right yeah. alibaba became too big for their shoes and mm. uh, the government had to step in and virtually force them to become uh, smaller and uh, you know uh, not create systemic risk uh, mm. india's regulator is ahead of the curve in my opinion and they will not let it happen uh and therefore all the three uh, will coexist so banks will revolutionize their technology fintechs will continue to partner with banks and some fintechs like you said will get nbfc licenses and disrupt uh the experience uh for segments of customers but all the three will coexist in a market like india got it got it so this essentially uh, you know spiked a new question that i have um essentially when you when you say that bank will completely revolutionize the way and their own technologies does that mean that ultimately bank would no longer be the customer facing entity but a service provider or a platform provider basically becoming banking as a service provider themselves providing apis services to essentially anyone who wants to integrate and create layer on top and give a build a customer experience on top of it could that be the future of banking uh well i i i'm not too sure that it's going to go uh, uh at least you know at least in my working life i don't see that happening i okay. i will because you know the 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 reason is that in a country like india uh at the end of the day there are different types of populations right so if you expect a banking to become a completely digital only service uh it will cater to one segment of our population it can never be the uh the the solution for uh you know the, uh, uh, the let's say the age group which is beyond just being digital right there are a huge number of customers who want to who want to still experience physical banking there will be rural customers who will want access to physical banking so there will be uh, both uh, uh, which will coexist from a banking standpoint however i think this acceleration to digital uh, is going to happen uh, rapidly right and but it will never 
be the end of physical banking uh, the way we've grown up to know it uh, mm-hmm. i think it will coexist but it will shrink as the digital experience increases for the customer got it i think that really puts things into perspective um over to you sarika yeah um really very interesting uh, point on the segmentation or uh, age groups that you mentioned here uh, one quick question i have there is that um, so i come from the gen z generation you can say and um, just few days back when i was booking my flight tickets i saw a lot of embedded uh, finance products thrown at me on the apps right, right. Uh, so how do you feel embedded finance will uh, change the way next generation is, uh, is using their financial products uh, by by maybe the seamless integration that they have it's just one click away everything right and um, yep. something on that if you can throw light on sure so basically i think you know uh, technology will evolve to an extent uh, where uh, the e- payment experience is i can't say fully invisible but it will be as close to a frictionless experience as you would like it to be so for example if you look at what zeta itself offers we have some very interesting sort of technologies that we offer to our customers uh, for e-commerce transactions we offer something called swipe to pay now what happens is when you are you know let's say you're shopping on amazon all you want to do is to basically pay for a transaction today the process is that you get an otp you then go into a you then go and look at the sms uh, you read the uh, six digit number and you know at my age remembering a six digit number becomes a problem so you do it twice uh, before you enter the correct number sometimes you get it wrong and then you have to re-enter the number all of that is a painful experience zeta offers something called swipe to pay so what happens is that when you are making the purchase we will trigger a uh, a function a, a simple button uh, which will appear on the on the on the zeta app which or a zeta powered banking app or the zeta powered fintech fintech app which will simply uh, ask you to uh, swipe to pay and once you do that swipe to pay that becomes the authentication which confirms that sagrika is indeed the person who has triggered this transaction and then uh, the transaction goes through seamlessly right so this is one example of how we are simplifying the payment experience for customers similarly uh, there are uh, you know some other sort of innovations that are happening right uh, bnpl or buy now pay later is a uh, is an experience that you must have experienced already in many of these uh, embedded finance sort of experiences that that you can think of so what's happening there is that customers are making the purchase like you in your case an airline ticket it uh, shows you an option which says you know pay with lazy pay uh, you just simply enable that and then off you go right your air ticket is inside your uh, 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 is in your mailbox and uh, either 15 days or 30 days later a lazy pay has just sent you a reminder to uh, automatically take that money from your bank account so uh, those experiences are all going to continue to grow and even in the physical world amazon is for example experiencing is actually got these experience stores in the us where you can actually walk in take all the stuff that you want to take and walk right out of the store uh, with a bag in hand and the payment is really uh, you know uh, using facial recognition uh, uh, and your app uh, amazon uh, app uh, the payment is made uh, almost uh, without even your knowing it so all of these phenomenon are going to happen however my word of caution in all this is that the more technology evolves the more you need to give customers great control over these experiences because you want to be in a position to tell the customer hey listen these are the great experience that you can have but you want to limit your exposure you don't want to be hit with a fraud which takes away your life savings right so you need to have controls on the app that powers your banking experience which says that you know you can turn on and turn off contactless you can turn on and turn turn off e-commerce set limits that set daily spending limits so when we developed our systems we've paid a lot of attention to these kind of controls as well so as a consumer you will have great experiences coming your way but you need to also protect your own financial assets so which means that you need to have risk mitigation mechanisms given to you to control so you should be able to make the choice on what you will and will not allow as seamless uh, embedded finance transactions 
I think I completely agree on that. I mean, um, of my experience of using such uh, financial products, especially specifically the NPL products, has been that um, I'm, I'm certainly getting credit limits that are over my bound to pay uh, after a month end. You know, and uh, I mean, I I am in sense of paying it on the right time or something. But uh, someone who's totally new to the uh, finance yep. world. uh if if they get that, that kind of exposure um i mean yeah, there, there's a huge gap i think absolutely so i think the idea is to, you you know it's 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 uh it's risk reward balance it's also about uh, controls uh so when we develop our products we are very very conscious about managing the balance between ease of use and control and uh fraud sort of uh, uh protection mechanisms That sounds good, Murli. Over to you, Shreya. Thank you, Sanjay. Uh, so, when we speak about embedded finance, something uh, that really comes to my mind, and this topic is really close to my heart, is financial inclusion. Right? When we talk of new regulations, I'm already, I mean, I'm always excited about how that will uh, essentially affect and impact the uh, the grassroots level audiences. Right? When we're looking at embedded finance products right now we are mainly targeting the urban population the tech savvy guys the millennials gen z and so on but how do you see this shaping the future of financial penetration and financial literacy in the bharat right in the rural areas how do you see these uh, financial embedded financial products uh, essentially helping create more and more adoption of this financial services So I think Shreyas over there, there are two uh, sort of phenomenon uh, which are important to take note of. One is this entire UPI-led growth that the market has seen, right? So we are today in the world's largest, uh, uh, and anyway, uh, rather, you know, India today clocks the highest number of digital transactions in the world, mm-hmm. uh, uh, and that has happened on the back of uh, phenomenal growth in UPI uh, payments, right? So whether it is Google Pay, whether it is um uh, phone pay or whether it is paytm all of these people have democratized banking so today i uh, i'm sure you have done this uh if you have house help at home and if you have um let us say the uh, you know your driver or uh, maybe uh, your uh, milk vendor and you your newspaper vendor earlier we used to give them all cash but today what we have started doing is we start we have started giving uh them money into a bank account uh which gives them financial literacy which gives them the power to like my driver today has three bank accounts i mean he when he started he was just you know uh, getting cash today he has three bank accounts his children have bank accounts his uh, uh wife has a separate bank account now who would have thought that this is something that we would see in our lifetime right and uh, i uh, you know today for example uh, let's say we uh, stay up late and i need to give him overtime i pay that money into his account he sends mm-hmm. his money to his native place to you know his uh, folks back home he transfers the money using google pay so uh, you know i i think this is trickle down economics this is uh, financial inclusion this is uh, driving financial literacy at a pace which uh, i don't think i would have fathomed when i was uh, starting off in the banking industry about 30 years ago right so at that time if somebody told me that rural banking uh, and uh, you know the the average man on the street uh, earning let's say less than uh, 20000 rupees a month was going to be fully banked and his family was also going to be fully banked i would have thought that that's not possible uh now he makes payments my driver makes payments uh to other folks uh using google pay uh he used to take uh, uh checks from me for his uh, children's school fees he stopped taking checks from me for his children's school fees so i think this is a great example of the democratization of banking i think uh, as uh you know and and you know people like bharat pay people like uh um uh, uh, uh the even the large banks like hdfc and icici are opening banking services in rural areas the post office uh, uh you know uh, uh, uh payments bank uh, started by the post and telegraph system is starting to reach in roads uh, make in roads in digital banking on the back of their post office uh, savings accounts i think these are all trends which are driving financial inclusion right i mean uh, and then it's a mass movement so if you really think about it if you take unilever for example with their 
uh, you know shakti uh, uh, self help groups which are powering uh, uh, powering millions of people uh, and women at that in rural areas who are leading their charge for rural distribution they are all getting paid using digital means today earlier they were getting cash and you know so i think it's a phenomenon which will automatically percolate down to the grassroots i think we are in the midst of a revolution and this will accelerate our uh, uh, our growth and there are any number of agricultural fintechs which are solving for the farmers fintech uh, uh, needs they are getting you know fintech eco- you know e-commerce ecosystems or retailing ecosystems with uh, with uh, farm uh, produce being available direct to consumers there's a lot of such activity going on so i think it's a uh, i'm very very bullish uh, i generally tend to be an optimist but i think it's genuinely a time for uh, refreshing uh, development and i think this time unlike the telecom revolution of the past this time the financial services industry is actually powering it got it i think that was a really good example that you gave of a driver i mean even let's say maybe a decade back i wouldn't have been able to fathom someone like that actually being completely banked and using all the digital means right so that is that essentially is a testament to the fact that how far we have come let's say in the past 5 years that the fintech has actually you know picked up pace but at this point of time <clears throat> if you look at a specific segment in rural area maybe daily wage laborers or if you look at farmers over there like marginal farmers do you see those kind of audiences uh, being those those segments do have smartphones right they have basic 5000 rupees on a smartphones do you see yeah. those guys essentially opting to uh, open accounts or uh, maybe from a neo bank or uh, maybe agri focus neo banks just to you know uh, give it a bit more flavor do you see those guys picking those or uh, versus an sbi bank you know account or something or do you i mean which which do you think will have a bit more weightage when they are actually making the choice of becoming bank for the first time yeah so i think uh, you know a few of the people that i've uh, interacted with in my uh, uh, sort of financial services journey have mm-hmm. actually started microfinance enterprises uh, in rural areas with a focus mm-hmm. on these kind of customer segments offering uh, tailor made products for their segment see the normal neo banking sort of uh, approach which uh, caters to the gen z customer like sagarika or uh, the the r- urban customer will not work in these areas right they right. need uh, they need language uh, which is uh, local they need uh, uh, you know uh, in 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 uh, various cases they will probably need assisted models of execution so i have a feeling that you know ru- rrbs combining uh, with microfinance institutions but with uh, you know new new age digital players will need to cooperate to solve for that problem uh, and, and i think uh, there are a n- number of such experiments uh, and i think people have also realized that there is money to be made uh, in serving the bottom of the pyramid because the credit cost for these populations is actually much higher than what uh, we incur today right today you mm-hmm. and i can get a personal loan at anywhere between 11 to 15% let's say right. but the rural customer is not going to get that the rural customer is paying 3% per day or 2% per day in many cases uh, mm-hmm. to the uh, to the money lender so uh, and you know the the farmers get uh, uh, get horrendous rates from from the uh, uh, landlord so all of that is changing uh, with digital uh, sort of microfinance uh, players uh, uh, working in tandem with the small finance banks uh, uh, you, you know to to solve for this so i think it requires small finance banking it requires a digital uh, digital microfinance sort of push to to solve for the uh bottom of the pyramid problem got it i think that's that's really insightful um coming from i mean basically uh what i wanted to understand is when you look at these kind of customers right and if basically anyone who is not tech savvy they are always a bit more wary about uh using new financial products products that are not coming from known and reputed brands right so let's say that kind of customer if they are looking at a yono app or if they are looking at a kotak bank eight one one app they are they have a comfort that yeah ye brand ko main janta hu i know what's happening over here sure if someone like neo goes to them and tells them ki open an account here there are 10 different features you can set up a jar for your savings you can do this you can do that 
you we do chutta scenes then you are able to essentially you know create a mutual fund for every day leftover change for every day i mean those concepts are very hard to digest for a customer who's not completely tech savvy i mean this this could be a urban customer working in a retail uh, industry like yeah. all or something like that owning 30 25000 a month who could probably be a target customer but what do you think uh, you know would be uh, something that could be done to address these concerns of these kind of customers you know how would you essentially tackle this problem so i think uh, you know the good thing is the rbi is still very uh, much the uh, you know the stable referee in this entire Uh, sort of revolution that's happening, right? So today, at the end of the day, if it's Neo offering a product, at the end of the day, there it is backed by a bank at the back, right? It mm-hmm. it could be a federal bank, it could be a, a RBL bank, it could be a uh, uh, um, you know one of the uh, Equitas bank. Uh, one of these banks is really powering this entire thing at the back end. So to that extent, the customer should not have a fear. But I think uh, the combination of educating these customers that it is safe to do. uh is a marketing problem to solve in a, rather than a, a financial security problem to solve in my opinion because at the end of the day because of the fact that rbi regulates all banks uh you can be rest assured that they are not going to you know um basically favor one bank versus the other i, I think they regulate all banks equally yes the customer in his own right will probably uh think of an sbi as a more um, uh, fundamentally uh, safe bank to bank with and you know mm-hmm. success is also to the extent related to the sbi bank's brand image right at the end of the day you know is a runaway success and you know rajneesh the previous chairman of sbi was famous when he quoted the fact that if you know was a separate app it would be worth 40 billion dollars uh, right uh, so at the end of the day uh, i think it is a slow process it is not going to be solved overnight but uh, i think um, in my opinion at least a neo is as safe as a sbi simply because it's backed with the rbi regulation and it's not some mom and pop show which is uh, unregulated and reaching out to the average consumer because in india it's very very clear the regulation is clear a deposit taking entity is regulated now whether it is a dis- the the best that you can do as a fintech is to be a distributor of a bank's license you mm-hmm. you don't have the you will never get a license to collect deposits from uh, from uh, from a consumer unless uh, you have rbi's uh, a regulated entity at the back uh, so cuz consumers don't have to worry about that uh, now some of these experiments are bound to fail i mean l- let's be clear about it if uh, people uh, uh, some of these experiments will not succeed for sure uh, some of these use cases will not be uh, uh, let's say uh, uh be successful uh the, but the advantage is that at the end of the day the customer belongs to the bank so the bank is responsible so we should be right. happy that there is an rbi regulated entity which is at the uh, uh at the fulcrum of all this fair you know that makes a lot of sense so ultimately whoever is creating the customer uh, experience and the front end the customer does not need to worry basically because at the back of it there is a bank who is being regulated by rbi and There is nothing much to worry about when you are working with the bus. Perfect. One last question. I think this is a bit off the track, but I think I'm going to enjoy that. Uh, so, like, how the whatever time that you have been working with Zeta and you have seen this entire stack in action, what is the most innovative or innovative solution that you have seen come out of you know using this new technologies? The most innovative financial product being built on this sector. Uh, well, uh, I would think that uh, the most innovative product that I have seen, or most successful innovative product, is the Fampe uh, Teen Card, which is, uh, mm-hmm. like I said, it's already crossed a million uh, consumers. But I would say that uh, we are very, very bullish, equally about banks using our technology shares. I think we are uh, uh, as excited as fintechs using our technology to launch products as we are about banks using our technology to launch products, because for us. we are the uh, we are the technology service provider who uh, way who views both banks and fintechs equally right our technology can be used by banks and our technology can be used by uh, by the likes of fampay we are very excited about uh, being uh, at the right place at the right time we are the only omni stack in the world which uh, has the ability to provide um, banks and fintechs the ability to launch credit cards debit cards prepaid cards savings accounts current accounts any or any loan account or a bnpl product of a fast stack so we are the only universal omni stack in the world uh, which is the reason why we are 
really really excited to see what lies ahead of us in the future uh, and this is not just an india play like i've mentioned when i started this is a global play we have okay. ambitions of making sure that we uh, disrupt the banking technology space globally both for banks and for fintechs got it got it audio sagrika if you have any questions Uh, no questions, uh, but uh, just a quick closing note. I think I've been very fascinated with the whole embedded finance products that I've been. Seeing. I mean, it's super seamless. Uh, how it it blows my mind how just one click gives you a BNPL option, uh, insurance for your flight, for your car, for your life, everything in just one click, right? So uh, yeah, I'm super excited about it, and I think um, this podcast leaves us super uh, super optimistic as well on the uh, following product. that are coming uh so yeah thank thank you so much mr murli for joining us so uh, thank you shreyas thank you so much thank you very much thank you rishabh and thank you hina for setting this up i mean this was a really great conversation with all of you